If I showed these leaves to most rural Zimbabweans, they would probably correctly identify it. If I showed these fruit to just about anyone in Zimbabwe, I'm pretty sure you'd all be able to tell me exactly what they are. This is Paranari curatelefolia hacha chakata. In Ndebele, they call it umkuna. In English, it's called the mobola plum sometimes known as the hissing tree. How's it guys? I'm Gus the African Plant Hunter. This is the next in my ongoing series about underutilized plants that I believe have great potential as African crops for the future. And today we're talking about this member of the Chrysobalanaceae family, the Paranari tree. So it's called the hissing tree because supposedly, and in common with many other trees in this family, there are silica crystals that get themselves into the bark and when you cut the tree down it protests by hissing. Now this tree is very easily identified. It's a beautiful tall tree. The bark you can tell when you look at it straight away. The, the markings on the bark are instantly recognizable. The leaves with their very distinctive patterning uh, totally discolorous, dark on the outside, light on the inside, and then the veins going almost perpendicular down to the main vein. Very different from most tree leaves where the veins run sort of parallel and outwards. So when you look at it, you instantly know that that is hacha. The fruit, of course, are also very quickly recognizable. Kind of plum-shaped, mobola plum, hence the name and they've got these little brown markings on the skin. So the fruit are green when they're unripe and then as they ripen, they turn a sort of darker brownie yellowish color. I can't unfortunately show you what the inside of the fruit look like right now because these ones are still a little unripe. I'm standing here in Mat North in Binga district, right up on the edge of the Zambezi escarpment in Chisarira at a camp called Mobola Camp named because of these beautiful tall Paranari trees you can see behind me. Now what is so special about this tree? Well most people are familiar with the fruit. The fruit are very tasty when they're fresh. They're also used to make a syrup. Uh, the fruit are boiled down. The syrup is called mtotozi, uh, well known to people particularly in Mashonaland. Very popular. Uh, a huge advantage of this syrup is that it's low in sucrose and uh, therefore excellent for diabetics as a natural sweetener, as an alternative to sugar. Very tasty. It makes a particularly wonderful snack when mixed with rapoko or gio, which is finger millet, uh, which is called jambaga. And that is a kind of all day eating snack. So you mix up the syrup with the finger millet and put it into balls and then you just take it with you and eat it while you're in the bush. Delicious, delicious. Uh, it's a wonderful dessert. These fruits are popularly and commonly sold in urban markets across the country. People absolutely love them. What has become more recently widely known are the nut. So inside the fruit there's a seed. This seed has got a nut. Of course, rural people have eaten that nut for centuries and they, everyone knows that it's edible, but it's only recently that it's coming out onto uh, the local market. And now you can find roast hacha nuts, salted hacha nuts, all kinds of different flavor of hacha nut. It's sort of almond shaped, really, really tasty, particularly when you roast it, got a nice crunch to it. And of course, there is huge growing global interest in tree nuts and nuts. Why is that? Well, the people are moving more and more towards plant-based diets and they need protein and nuts have got them. Also a big part of what they call the ketogenic diet or the paleo diet where you're eating a particularly high protein diet uh, and tree nuts play a big part in those. And as more and more people trying to lose a bit of weight going onto these diets, the demand for nuts is just increasing. Unfortunately, hacha nuts are not yet ready for export because they have not been put through the regulatory approval processes, which would enable us to market them internationally uh, in Europe or North America, say. But I'm sure that's only a matter of time. There are absolutely no issues, no reason why they shouldn't be approved. And they are super, super tasty, as anyone who's eaten them will tell you. 
But there's even another use for the nuts and that's to produce an oil. So any nut you can squeeze it and an oil will come out, maybe squeezing it's not the right word, putting it through an oil press. Uh, they're all high in oil. This one has got about 40% oil content in the kernel and that oil is almost entirely made of unsaturated fatty acids, which are the good ones. So it's an excellent oil. You can consume it as a cooking oil. You can eat it as a salad oil. You can also put it on your skin as a moisturizing oil. Now that there is where the export market opportunity probably most immediately arises because there aren't the regulatory issues that are required for foods for cosmetics. So there's no regulatory hurdles to putting Paranari or Hacha oil out onto the cosmetic market. It's not particularly unusual in its properties, but it's a very serviceable natural oil, uh, excellent for moisturizing your skin. All right, guys, that's it for this episode. There's plenty more on my YouTube channel and Facebook and Instagram, AfricanPlantHunter.com. Just check it out. I am going off in search of other new African crops for the future. I will catch you later. Take it easy. Bye. Thank you.